I'm Pam, and I would like to welcome you to the Live Authentically Show. My team and I help other people step into their authentic realities, and we do this a number of different ways through this podcast. We also have a Facebook group of people committed to spiritual growth and transformation, and we'd love to have you join us. And you can find us at liveauthentically.today slash FB. I also have my first book out there. It is Soaring, S-O-A-R, in the universe. And it's an experiential spiritual journey of a transformative event in my life and shows how I partnered with the universe. And I believe that no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter if you feel like you're stuck at rock bottom, there's always a way through. So with an open mind and an open heart, you too, I totally believe that you can get to a place of soaring. So go ahead and check that out. And I have a great show planned today. We have a very special guest, David Richman. Hey, David. Hello, how are you? Doing great, thanks for asking. How about you? Good, 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 Pam. I'm excited to talk to you. I love the title of your podcast live authentically because that's uh, being authentic is such a hard thing to do it's a wonderful thing but it's such a hard thing to do yeah it can be hard but like once we start to get a taste of as, as I'm sure you found on your journey and we'll hear about that it's so freeing right when you can just show up as yourself and be yourself and it's kind of cool how the universe just sort of aligns us with with other people you know who are also like-minded in that similar vibe so we're going to get into all of that Today, um, just a little background on David. He is an author, speaker, and endurance athlete, and he's on a mission to make meaningful human connections through storytelling. So he's going to tell us all about that. But first, Mm. I'd like to ask you the question that I ask all of my guests, and that is, how do you live authentically every day? So like when I said it was hard right? It, it took me a long time and, and, and you, you know, you kind of alluded to it just a minute ago. I think living authentically is really understanding who you are Mm -hmm. and being at peace with that so that you can, you know, connect with the people around you, connect with what the world can show you, you know, connect with your place in, in the greater scheme of things. And it's a hard thing to do. At least it was for me. I, I didn't, not find my authentic place until, you know, kind of my late thirties. And, um, I was at a, a, at a, a low point in my life. I had, um, I had, had to escape, a um, kind of a, a very, uh, violent marriage and get my kids. They were only four years old twins to safety. And I was overweight and I was a smoker and I had no idea who I was, no idea. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I went on a journey to find out who I was and kind of live a more authentic kind of purposeful, uh, more self-aware life. And that's, that's, um, that's kind of what being authentic for me is, is like learning who I was and then mm-hmm. trying to stay true to that. I love that. And so was there a particular moment during that challenging time where you had, it was like an aha moment or an epiphany where you said, you know what, I absolutely have to do this differently. There there was, it it, it all happened in a short period of time. I'm not going to say it was like, boom, I got hit by a lightning bolt, but in a very short period of time after I got my kids and I to safety and kind of looked in the mirror for the first time with a different eye of self-awareness and said, Hey, this, you know, I don't like who you are. And you never really even thought about who you want to be. Like you're always just pleasing people or finding problems to fix. And you're, you're just like, you're looking to others to, to validate you. I was like trying to become self-aware and really understand what that meant. And at the same time, so I'm, I'm beginning this journey, which for me is like, brand new. Like I, I wasn't continuing a journey. I was like, Oh my God, I got hit with this lightning bolt of self-awareness and I'm going to go on this path to find out who I am Mm -hmm. at that time, Pam, I get a call from my sister. Who's already long along that journey, beautiful marriage, beautiful kids, beautiful career, friends living her best life. And she gets a call saying that she has terminal brain cancer. And so she's at that same time starting a journey that's going to lead her to, you know, the end of her life. And so, you know, I think that kind of lightning bolt, you know, realization, like, man, I get this opportunity to finally like start living and figure out what that means. And then the one person 
that I can consider family in my life is um, now on a journey to die. And just that, that kind of just gave me a little more uh, purpose and motivation to say, yeah, you, you got to do this. You, like, you got to do this. You got to, you got to try to live a good life because, mm-hmm. you know, maybe not everybody gets a chance to. Yeah. That's so beautiful. And I'm sorry to hear about that. Uh, your sister situation. And I know that must've been so challenging and, and the situations like that really do, they help us, you know, to, to dig deep, right. And to ask us questions and, and really live life at a new level. And, um, you know, you alluded to living authentically being hard and, you know, I agree with you, by the way, it is a hard journey. There's heavy lifting, it's walking uphill, et cetera, but you know, it's, it's what's necessary. You know, the, that hard work is necessary to kind of get to the other side or break through to that authentic place. But what were some of the things that got in the way, uh, along the way, what do you think are some of the barriers that you faced along the way to that stood between you and your authenticity? <laughs> I was probably the biggest barrier because um, I had uh, done what a lot of people do, right? You, you, you get into patterns where um, all of a sudden, like years later, you wake up going, excuse me, like, what were you thinking? So like what got me to really start that, that, that like get trying to get myself out of the way because I had a chip on my shoulder, right? I was trying to solve problems. I like looked to others for validation. Like I said, Mm -hmm. I was complaining about my personal situation, that, that marriage, that, that relationship with a friend of mine. And he had heard me whining about this situation for a couple of years. And he finally just looked at me and he said, dude, you are the problem. Stop it. Stop it. You're the problem. And I go, what? I'm not the problem. And he goes, no, you're the problem. He goes, you are like reaching out to try to pet a rabid dog and the dog is rabid. The dog doesn't know any better. The dog is going to bite you, but you think that you're so special that you can reach out and pet this dog. He goes, why don't you worry about fixing yourself? Why don't you not try to pet rabid dogs in your life? Why don't you worry about like you? Why don't you fix you? Why are you always trying to do stupid stuff like that? And I'm like, whoa maybe I am the problem. So I, I think the the obstacles that I needed to overcome was that kind of trying to become aware of what my own limitations were mm-hmm. and what the bad patterns that I had um, was, you know, like many of them, and then learning how to forgive myself for what I didn't know when I didn't know it. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, it was kind of like trying to become self-aware forgiving myself. And then, I mean, the the other things weren't obstacles. They were wonderful challenges. It was like leaning into what am I going to find? What am I going to learn? What am I going to, you know, what's going to be shown to me along this path? So I wouldn't say those were obstacles. Those were more like, like a little stopping points that that taught me lessons along the way. Mm -hmm. And did you find that your mindset changed along the way as you like, as you, did you move like out of fear into like excited anticipation about like what, yeah. <laughs> you know, nobody's really asked me a question like that. And yeah, my mindset changed. Um, I don't know what's the opposite of it didn't change at all. Like it changed absolutely in every possible way you could ever imagine. Right. Yeah. So every, every, right. I stopped beating myself up for what I did in the past. I, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, not, that moment. I mean, it takes yeah. some time to, to, to do that. I, I learned how to set high enough goals. I was just, I was an overweight smoker who had never done anything athletic. And all of a sudden I'm doing, you know, Ironmans and 50 mile runs and hundred mile runs and oh, wow. 5,000 mile oh, cool. bike ride. I went from doing nothing to being like st- stupidly a- athletic. Right. Um, and I still do them 20 years later, I still do Ironmans and I still do multi-day bike rides and all this crazy stuff. Because it was like, I, I just, I, I didn't think that I could do stuff like that. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I, I changed my lifestyle. I changed my view. I most importantly, which, which I think leads to uh, your beautiful concept of living authentically is I changed the way I, I value myself. Right. I used to value myself based on how I perceived others valued me. 
mm-hmm. which they don't, they, people don't think about you that way. They don't care, right? You got to care about yourself. So um, uh, that was a, a wonderful lesson to learn. So yeah, I, I think um, becoming that authentic, uh, self-aware, like purposeful person it changed me in every way possible, every way. I love that. And so what was one of the first steps that you took to, uh, took on this journey to living authentically? Did you, you know, rally support from other people? Did you look to a spiritual mentor or guide, or did you draw from within? And was it a self-guided journey? You know, I didn't look for anything. I, I just, um, I just allowed whatever was going to happen was going to happen. I just wanted to try to do things more on purpose. And, you know, I wrote this, this, this first book called, called winning. Uh, I wrote other books, but, but in other fields, um, but my first book that wasn't specific to a, a field was called winning in the middle of the pack. And I, and I developed this concept of in the middle of the pack, like in a big race, nobody's, nobody's everybody's anonymous nobody's looking at anybody right there there's nobody famous in the middle of the pack there's nobody like you know super athletic nobody's gonna win right the race from the middle of the pack and i was just like that's a really great anonymous place to be because then you can just be doing it for yourself and seeing what you can do and i I love that idea of finding out what you can do and um I, i it just gave me a wonderful place where when I didn't care what other people thought about me, which mostly they didn't think about me. Right. But I thought they did. But when I, when when I just, I stopped caring as much about what other people thought and started caring about what I thought and what I was trying to accomplish and being really present in that, that's where all the growth came from. And it, it didn't, it wasn't like I wasn't drawn to somebody or something or some frame of mind. I was just drawn to this journey of discovering, geez, what are you available? Can I tell you a super quick story, Pam? I'm on, uh, I'm in this race. Okay. If you can imagine Atlanta, Georgia to Athens or Athens, Georgia to Atlanta, Georgia, it's 85 miles. It's a race on rollerblades. Oh, wow. Could you imagine that? Like the stupidest thing ever. I'm totally not coordinated. So what the heck am I doing on rollerblades in the first place? And I'm about 35, this is very, very early into my athletic uh, life. And I'm, I'm about 35 miles in and I'm depleted of everything I could ever have inside of me. I'm toast. I'm, I'm done. Like I, I gotta be done. And I'm hunched over in a ball and it's, it's end of summer. I'm sweating like a uh, terrible all over the asphalt. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm done. Like this is as far as I can go. And I kind of stood there for a minute to collect my breath and my thoughts. And I knew I was done. And I just had this little voice inside that said, geez, David, if you go home, you're going to know everything about yourself. Like that's it. Pack it up. You're done. You're going to know everything, which isn't a bad thing to know where your limits are and know everything about yourself. I go, but if you can go just one step further, you're going to learn something new Mm -hmm. and one step further. And one step further, every step that you take is going to be something you're going to find out about yourself. You might fail 10 steps down. You learn that. That's fine. But it, it just keep going until you keep learning and learning and learning. And I finally finished the race. It took me nine hours, right? It was, it was ridiculous. But I learned that when you are on a journey of self-discovery, sometimes you fail at point. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're you know, you can take more steps. Sometimes you can't whatever, but you are always learning. And that, that was the thing that drew me. That's the, that's the guide, the, the frame of mind that journey that, that drew me was that you can always learn everything. Every new step is a whole like new world opening up to yourself that you didn't know before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that story. Super powerful. And what came to me while I was listening to you is that, you know, if you would have gone home and just kind of hung it up, you know, that would have been, you would have been, would have been retreating back into what's comfortable, right? What's comfortable, what's known, but instead you intentionally stayed in that uncomfortable place. And I think that's such a big piece of this journey is learning to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And it's not, it's, it, it's not very comfortable because sometimes you have to know when to quit. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you, 
uh, find out truths about yourself that you're not super proud of, or you say, I wasted this time, or I acted this way, or I, I, this is my fault. Or, I mean, I mean, honestly, when you do uh, want to try to live authentically and live, you know, grounded and centered and, and connected in, in, in a real way, um, you have to realize that, you know, not everything about you and not everything about everybody else is perfect. And mm -hmm. it's tough. It's, it's sometimes that's hard, right? It really is. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I love the, um, the work that you're doing in the world. I know you're doing a lot of amazing work in a number of different capacities, but what, um, what are you feeling called to talk about right now? I know that you, you know, you're an author, you've got books and you're a speaker right. and, um, I know you work with people in other capacities. So what are you feeling the pull to talk about right now? So what most of my day is filled up, uh, talking about the cycle of lives project. And I'll, I'll be super brief about this Pam, but, uh, the cycle of lives project is when my sister, uh, June was, um, dealing with her terminal brain cancer, her and I had a lot of talk. We, we, we talked a ton about the mm -hmm. uh, nothing about important things, about heavy things, about light things, but we talked a lot. And we kind of got into the emotional discussions um, a bit about what she, how she was feeling and, you know, the deep, real deep emotional trauma that she was dealing with. Um, and I was, I was happy about that, but I noticed Pam that um, that wasn't common. It, it was, you know, it wasn't un terribly uncommon, but it wasn't really common. P people were really good when it came to cancer, whether it was a doctor or a patient, the survivor, loved one, caregiver, I noticed that they're really good about talking about the tasks about things. People like wanted to wrap their brains around, how do I get my kids watched when I'm in the chemo chair? And how do I navigate the healthcare system? And how do I get time off of work? And how do I eat better? Blah, blah, blah. The tasks they were good at, but the talking about the emotions, how do you feel about this was not real easy for people to do. So I gathered over a number of months, I, I searched out a bunch of different stories of very, very interesting people who had overcome or were dealing with overcoming a bunch of childhood and young adult traumas, you know, mm -hmm. same kind of things that everybody else has. Mm -hmm. uh, you witness suicide or abandonment or drug addiction or bad, uh, bad decisions or, mm -hmm. you know, abuse or whatever. Those traumas lead up to point a point a being when you encounter cancer point b is today so from point a to point b this cancer journey as a caregiver loved one patient survivor whatever how how are you able or unable to connect to the people in your lives because of the traumas that you've gone through mm. and what what allows you or prevents you from connecting about the emotional side. And there's a thought that just intrigued me. And I, I interviewed a ton of people for a couple of years uh, to really learn their stories so that I could write them in a very authentic, you know, real way so that the reader could um, identify with the person, the traumas, we all have those, um, and maybe uh, gain a tool or two on how to connect with people that are going through something as difficult as cancer. Um, at the, at the end of that, I, I figured we're all connected by stories. So I got on my bike. I had one book participant in Chicago. I didn't make it up to Chicago, but I got on my bike and I, and I, um, I, I, I connected the stories by biking to all meet all of the people I had talked, been talking to. So I biked from, California through New Mexico, Texas, Florida, all the way up to New York, um, 5,000 miles in about 45 days. And so, um, yeah, so that, that's the project that I've been uh, focused on for a few years, a hundred percent of everything goes to charity. So it's more of a, a, a passion project than anything else, but mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's a good part of what fills my life for sure. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love that. Did you get pictures with all of them along the way too? I did. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I good, good pictures some video, great stories. And it's tough because yeah. you imagine talking to somebody about, you know, the most emotional things in their life, mm -hmm. the abandonment by a parent, you know, yeah. living in abusive relationships, you know, uh, making bad decisions and going to prison. I'm 
really personal stuff. And then also talking about them dealing with mortality, even their own, or as a, you know, as a loved one watching somebody die or carrying them through a cancer journey. And we've, you know, we've talked for a couple of years and we were like super deep. And then all of a sudden we meet each other for the first time. It was, there were quite, quite a few of those pictures where uh, there, there were some Kleenex and uh, needed, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. What did you learn about yourself over the course of that project? Uh, I think what I, usually I'm asked, what do I learn about everybody else? What do I learn about myself? Um, I probably jumped too easy to the conclusion um, that I understood what somebody was going through. Cause I feel like I'm very observant, right? So and I think we might all have a tendency to do this a little bit, like not really know that there's probably a lot more behind the scenes than we know. Mm -hmm. And so after talking to people, I, I gained an appreciation for the idea of you never know what people are going through or what they have gone through. Mm -hmm. And when somebody's having a bad day, I used to, you know, go like, really, you're going to be a jerk to me. Like, like, really, you're going to cut me off. Really? You're going to snap at me. And I kind of made it about me when I, I'm like, maybe, you know, now I know maybe they're at home dealing with a dying child, or maybe uh, something happened to them a few minutes ago that reminded them of, of a parent's suicide, or I, I mean, you know, people are going through stuff and, and it sticks with them. It's just like we, it sticks with me. And, and I think um, I've learned um, a, a lot more compassion and empathy and less jumping to conclusions about what I think might be going on with people because people are dealing with a lot. And, and, and I don't think I gave as much validity to that thought without really going deep into so many, so many crazy, crazy stories with people to really understand that, man, people really are dealing with a lot of crap. Right. Right. And yeah, as you started to talk about that, compassion is the word that came to mind. And, you mm -hmm. know, I think that that's a huge piece of this journey to living authentically is rather than just reacting and, you know, and, um, you know, and without really even thinking, you know, we all can, when we experience something that's challenging for us or experience someone else, whatever, cutting us off in traffic, whatever it is, the events of daily life, um, we can pause, right? We can pause and think about how do we want to respond. And we can, in that moment, step into, attempt to step into their human experience, right? Because their response really isn't about what's going on. It's about, you know, it's not what, what's happening in that moment. It really does bring up a lot with in their past and the trauma and all of that. So that's filtered through the lens of their own human experiences, right? So I think we can ask ourselves, pause and just ask ourselves questions like, how can I meet this person with love while still maintaining our own boundaries? Yeah, that's a big piece of it. But how can I choose love or how can I choose kindness in this moment, right? How can I stay in my high vibrations and, and you know, really and share a little bit of my light with that person? it's easy to meet people in lower vibe places, right? It's easy to match people with anger. It's easy to match people and kind of go into a, you know, mudslinging contest, whatever. But, you know, that's really where the work is, right? And if, can we stay in our high vibrations regardless mm -hmm. of what's going on around us, right? That unconditional state of living is really the kind of the ultimate goal in this spiritual journey is staying in that place of peace and love and truth and connection mm -hmm. and empowerment, regardless of what chaos is ensuing around us. Yeah. And uh, it's really beautifully said, and thank you for sharing that. And it made me, made me think that, you know, part of um, the most important part of that whole, like being able to live authentically in my mind is forgiving yourself for not knowing what you didn't know before like accepting the fact that you have been, or you are vulnerable, or you have been, you are wrong. You, you, you can learn along the way. And if you really take that to heart and you really allow yourself um, that empathy, then can't you turn that around to other people just as easily? But it's a really, it's a really hard thing to do because we want to beat ourselves up. We want to 
have regret. We want to maybe get rid of the, the, the chip on our shoulder. And it's not so easy sometimes, but if, if you start with that empathetic and caring thought about yourself, it might become a little bit easier to do that with other people, mm-hmm. you know? And, and so I, I, I've always been caring and, and I think, you know, in the right way, soft, if, if that, if, if that makes um, sense in interacting with people, but I think it's been taken to a whole nother level when I became more empathetic and caring about myself, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and, and thinking about, you know, this whole idea of living authentically is hard. I agree with that, but in every, I feel like in every aspect of life, there's always a hard, right. You know, so for example, in the area of health, right. Or, you know, managing your weight, both paths are hard, right. Being overweight is hard for a number of different reasons and, and maintaining your weight and living, eating super clean and working out every day. That's hard, right? Like you have to choose your heart in every single aspect of life and, and living authentically is no different, right? So choosing the authentic path is hard. It comes with its challenges, its growth along the way, but also not living an authentic life is hard, right? So you like have to choose your heart, but right. living the authentic right. life, like doing you know, doing the right thing or doing the thing that, you know, is, um, you know, living authentically, for example, choosing that path or choosing to live healthy, like that's the mindset. And that's the choice that will sustain you and open you up to all of the love and peace and abundance that this world has to offer on a continual basis. The other method is kind of may get us through in the moment, but it's going to keep us stuck. That's so, that's so awesome. Let me tell you another super quick story just to accentuate that point of it's supposed to be hard and you can choose for it to be hard in the right way. So I'm getting ready to run a 50 mile race at the end of June wow. in Vegas. So it's, it's mm-hmm. 120 degrees, you know, it's just, it's stupid. And I show up like five minutes late to the start line. So I'm all stressed out and frantic and I, I, I it's already 90 degrees at 6 AM in the morning. I mean, what the heck is that even? And then the race starts from the parking lot, go, going up to the main road, and you got to run uphill at the beginning. And I'm like, really? <clears throat> like it's 90 degrees. It's I'm stressed out. I'm running uphill. I got to go 50 miles. And I went, wait a second, dude. Like literally, you're going to complain about something. You signed up for this. Nobody paid you, mm-hmm. right? You wanted to do this to see what you could do. Yeah. Uh, honestly, you're the one that showed up late right? You, it's supposed to be hard. What do you think they're going to do? Make it downhill, right? It's 50 miles <laughs> in the desert. What do you expect? Yeah. Just change your perspective, yeah. calm down. Nobody's paying you to be here. It's supposed to be hard. Like mm-hmm. deal with that now, accept that it's hard and just go about what you need to do. Mm-hmm. So that's so funny. It's like, what hard do you choose? It would have been a lot harder for me to just complain and go home and, and, and live with the would live with the self-regret that I didn't challenge myself. Right. That would have been hard. What this is a different kind of hard, this kind of hard it was supposed to be. So, okay. Lean into it, embrace it and stop complaining about it. Yeah. (laughs) I love that. In every opportunity, everything in life gives us the chance to, for these little reframes, right? Like, you know, you said like, I've got to do this, but you know, in that moment, we can all do this all throughout our day. Instead of the, I got to, we can choose, I get to Mm -hmm. right now, all of a sudden it's a privilege, right? All of a sudden now it's an honor to be able to do this. You know, what appears to be, you know, a really just insurmountable challenge in the moment. But, you know, I always reframe everything by saying, you know, like other people are are praying for what I have right now, right? Even though I might be challenged in a certain area, like mm-hmm. it's a privilege. Everything that I get to do is a privilege, right? Getting the last available parking spot in the in a huge parking lot and having to walk in the 10 degree Chicago, you know, weather, like that's a privilege, right? right. Because one, there was a spot available and two, because I get to walk. I mean, there are people who, who don't have that opportunity in this world. So I think we can all do that throughout mm-hmm. the day and just reframe our, I, you know, I have to into, I get to. Yeah, so. that's really beautiful. And I, I totally agree with you. And I, and I love that idea of like, just being grounded and, you know, centered and, you know, not to use the word too much, but authentic is that, is that just be aware, like, like I, I right. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to do sometimes because life gets in the way, but just, just be aware. And I, I, you know, I learned this from, 
from the people that I spoke to in, in the book, right? Um, they're, they're, they all had just these ridiculously inspiring, amazing stories of overcoming, you know, the worst traumas and as kids and, and young adults and, and that you could imagine that we've all dealt with or seen people we love and care about deal with and then how they go about their lives with such grace and with mm -hmm. such compassion and with, with such, um, you know, just, just this wonderful, I, I can learn from this. I can grow, you know, attitude is it, it's really inspiring. And so, um, uh, I think when you do, um, become more self-aware and you do forgive yourself and you do understand that people really are going through things, you become more humble and more appreciative and more, um, open to connecting at a deeper, you know, like you say, higher frequency level with people. And that's, that's, I think where the real joy in life is for sure. Right. Well said, amen to that. So we are getting ready to wrap up our show here, but I wanted, before we do that, I wanted to give you just a couple of minutes to just open it up. Um, carte blanche, you can talk about whatever you'd like to talk about one of your current projects, something that we can look forward to in the future or whatever you'd like to. And then also your contact information if people like would like to get in touch with you. Directly. Sure. Well, thanks. I guess the thing I'll talk about is what I'm so excited about right now is the audible on my book came out and uh, which it's the most incredible audible ever, Pam. I don't know if you made your book into an audible, but I had 15 different voice actors do each one of the 15 people in the book. Oh, wow. And so... Uh, you know, between the writing and the rewriting and the editing and then the publisher and the publisher's editor and rewriting and blah, 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 that, that was like two years. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you go back, um, uh, you know, I talked to people for two years. So, you know, we're talking, you know, three, four, five years ago that I, that I talked to these people. So, and I got really, really close to them, right. Really close. And so now I'm hearing through these voice actors tell their stories in the book and it's unbelievably moving. I know that might be a little too personal, but, um, but um, I, I, audible is just, is so awesome. I, I was um, contacted by many of the voice actors who wanted to tell me a story of them going through cancer or a loved one going through something traumatic and how difficult and and wonderful it was for them to read these parts. And I'm just like, oh my God. So like I said, 100% of the proceeds from uh, each one of the book participants picked a cancer focused charity or a hospital or a cancer center or something, a support group or something that they want to support. Mm -hmm. So we divide up all the, anything, any money that comes to us, we, we just divide it up equally and it goes out to all these organizations. So I'm not saying that to raise money for me. I'm doing it to raise money for the organizations. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited. If you listen to books, it it's, it's moving, moving audible. I listen to audibles all the time because I'm on the bike or running through mm -hmm. the desert for 10 hours at a time. I, I love to listen to books and um, this one's, this one's really moving, really inspiring. Awesome. We'll have to check it out. So well, thank you so much for being on my show. I so appreciate you being here. Yeah, thanks, Pam. I appreciate you taking some time with me. I love your whole concept and your idea and the stuff that you're doing. And it's, um, you know, you're not telling people what to do. You're just drawing them in and trying to show them a little about what you're doing, which I think is the right way to do it. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that and for all the amazing work you're doing in the world. I so appreciate it. And so does everyone else. Um, thank you to our viewers and listeners. I appreciate you. As you know, by now, you've heard me say it a million times. I believe the time is a choice. And I'm grateful that you carved time out of your day to be here with me and David to hear about all of his wisdom that he's had to share today. So everyone, thank you. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you soon. Bye.